is sexuality a private matter or is it a public matter like one's race, uh, one's gender? Um, and the answer increasingly is that it's a, it's a public matter. Things that we consider private are things that we stigmatize, things that we're ashamed of. And as we have a great awareness of sexual diversity, people are coming out of the closet and we're moving to say, hey, this is no different than heterosexual, you should have the same rights and the same benefits. We're increasingly saying that sexuality is not a private issue. But the university is also in a position where it desires to um, be sure that its sexual minority students and staff have a positive experience. How can you measure that if you don't know who your sexual minority staff are? Well, for me, labeling was a very important thing. Like, I identify as a pansexual, and for the longest time, my sexuality had no name for me. I couldn't figure out what I was, and I felt really obscure and ashamed of who I was until um, I ended up um, reading about it on the internet, and someone brought it to my, to my attention. And I, it gave me a community. It gave me a community to speak to about who I was and it made me feel less foreign and afraid in the world. Obviously I think labels in terms of sexualities and genders are very important. I think it helps people a hell of a lot to know, to be able to say this is what I am, this is how I experience love. Um, but I think in terms of putting a label on it in a way that other people can then say, oh so this person is this and this person is that, I think that's a bit weird. It doesn't sit right with me. Um, I think it's something that actually it doesn't need to be published as such. I think it is quite sad that we do label label everyone, um, but we're currently not in a society where people are comfortable with. Um, in in my experience, when I first started going out with my partner, I was just recently out, and I even remember saying to him, "I'm not going to hold your hand," because I, I was too scared. Like honestly, I will admit, even going into Winchester I was scared but now um, about a year in I just don't care anymore we hug we kiss we hold hands everywhere we go and I just think I'm not going to apologize for who I am I'm going to be who I am heterosexual people aren't apologizing for themselves for being for being heterosexual so why should we apologize for being who we are it's always possible that when you come out of the closet and you're visible that you make yourself more of a target for those who desire to harass you with homophobic you know sentiment. Um, but at the same time, you need that community of support. You need others around you to help battle cultural homophobia at large. We know that the greatest cause for reducing cultural homophobia is being introduced to another sexual minority. So if this list can virtually introduce people, if people can look at the list and go, oh, I didn't realize my lecturer was lesbian, then it helps reduce cultural homophobia. So it has a larger positive effect than I can see it having a negative effect. It forms more of a community because like, I feel like we've got like a really good thing going yeah. with all the people that come to LGBT. I didn't even know these people like three months yeah. ago because yeah, yeah. um, uh, I mean a lot of them are freshers. Uh, but you know, just them coming here, we've like kind of got a really good connection with everyone. And I feel like if, for example, there was a person who wanted to join L uh, LGBT but didn't really know how to go about it or was a bit nervous, uh, they could look on the list and maybe you know, look for your name because you yeah. do loads yeah. of diversity stuff or, yeah. you know, maybe they'd met one of one of us lot once and then they were like, oh, they mentioned LGBT but I don't remember their name and then they could look on the list and kind of find people and then get in contact with people and mm -hmm. find yeah. the society because I've like, had a really good time with these guys yeah. so yeah. I reckon other people would too. It's, it's about the community essentially, it's about seeing who you're in the same boat with and of course they are currently including heterosexual allies which is a good thing in a new university because there's as you know we'd like to think of it as a safe place but a lot of people in the LGBT have you know confessed that we still feel that we receive quite a bit of bigotry on campus so it kind of shows that we are supported in you know the, the grand mainframe. I think if I saw the list um, it would just sort of advertise to me personally that the university is quite um, a friendly atmosphere to be in but I think looking at it now from where I am it was two years into into it um, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. The Outlist is designed to send a symbolic message to both members of the Winchester community and externally that the University of Winchester is a culturally diverse sexually inclusive place that we value all of our staff and all of our citizens regardless of their sexual orientation. I, the main issue I have with the list is not that the, the uh, LGBT people can go on it, it's the whole uh, issue with the ally section. Only because I feel like if there are people who aren't on the list as allies, um, there's 
there'll be a panic that, for example, if you have a lecturer and he or she isn't on the list, then you'd automatically maybe think maybe they have an issue uh, with uh, like queer people or maybe, you know, it might make you a bit nervous going to lesson and you might be a bit less willing to share your work if your work has kind of uh, gay themes running through it, like a lot of mine does. And I feel like, because I know my lecturers are really comfortable with that, so I can just share it and not worry. But then not seeing them on the list might then make me worry and make me not want to kind of submit that kind of work. The point seems to be more kind of to know who is out um, and to know who is part of that community and is standing up for themselves. Um, I think having allies obviously is important. I think it's probably better to have it as a separate list though, in theory, because the use of the word out in outlay suggests that it's for people who come out. That I feel like we should have a separate list for allies Right, because the process of coming out, the out list, essentially. I mean, the process of coming out for LGBT is such a, a courageous thing to say, you know, I'm, I'm not part of the norm, essentially. And I don't like the idea that this is being trivialized by adding heterosexuals to lists. So maybe if we had like a separate ally list, that'd be better. Um, but no, essentially, I really do like the list. I do like the idea of it.